Shalom everyone and greetings to you all in the name of the Most High God. And today we are here again to present another word for today. And so before we begin, we will begin with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us all trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All praises to the Most High. So before we go into the Word, we will welcome the presence of the Lord in worshiping. All praises. I will enter in His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter in his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to show the says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. Lean in, lean in, safe and secure from all. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting love. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting love. Leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, safe and secure from all our land. Leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, leaning on the everlasting love. I give the glory, is it to you I give the praise? For you have done so much for me. And I will magnify your name. Is it to you, Holy Father? No one as by you. And I will praise your name. Praise your name. And I will praise your name. Is it to you I give the glory? Is it to you I give the praise? For you have done so much for me, and I will magnify your name. Is it to you, Holy Father? <clears throat> No one is but you, and I will praise your name. Praise your name, and I will praise your name forevermore. 
topic in the most high. So I will begin. The word is from the book of John chapter 12. And the description says, Jesus excused Mary, Mary anointing his feet. The people flocked to see Lazarus. The high priest consulted to kill him. Christ rided into Jerusalem. Greeks desire to see Jesus. He foretelled his death. The Jews are generally blinded. Yet many chief rulers believe but do not confess him. Therefore Jesus called it earnestly for confession of faith. The, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them and sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment or spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with odor of the ointment. Then said one of the, his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? As if he meant, as if, as if um, Judas meant it. Because he thought that this ointment was too good to be um, placed on Jesus' feet. Yet Mary saw the word of God, how Jesus, how much he worked, and she honored him by anointing his feet. Why was not, sorry, verse 6 says, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had a bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying, had she kept this. For the poor always he have with you, but me he have not always, because Christ knew that his time of crucifixion was coming. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came, and not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. So they didn't, they didn't just come because of Christ, but they came to see the miracle. Oftentimes, people will just want to see the evidence. But let's see what the word has to say for the art. It says, But the chief priest consulted, and they might put Lazarus also to death. So they were angry. The chief priests were angry that Christ performed this great miracle. No one had ever seen a man raised from the dead. They knew that it was Christ doing. They knew that it was a miracle. But they wanted to convince the people otherwise. And so they had a plot and a plan to get Lazarus, put Lazarus to death again. Verse 11 says, Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. They didn't want this to happen. They didn't want the, 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 the crowd to believe in Jesus because they wanted them to be. They wanted to take the honor and the glory of God. They didn't believe, first of all, they didn't believe he was the Christ. Because he didn't look the look. Because he didn't say the things that they, they thought they would hear. Because they did not understand the scripture. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. They didn't have the wisdom of the Lord. Verse 12 says, On the next day, much people that were, were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, 
took branches of palm tree and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass court. These things understood not his disciples at, at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. So at the beginning, even his disciples who was with him, his followers, did not understand. But they remembered what Christ, what Christ had taught them. They remembered the, the, the prophecies that was taught before that had to come to pass, right? For 17 says, the people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. So the disciples were able to testify of those things because they were with him and they saw they were able to bear record of what had taken place. Even some of the so-called Jews who did not, who rejected Christ, who condemned him, they saw, but yet they lied about it because it was all for their own glory. It was all for them to look good. They, they, they were more concerned about being in competition with Christ didn't want to be seen as the least, didn't want to be seen as insufficient as they were, useless, without the Spirit of God, without any power, powerless. So they had to paint a different picture about Christ. And there are many people today that will do that for their own gain because they want to be the one standing. A man that God had chosen to demonstrate his righteousness, a man that God himself had sent to be a sacrifice for us, was rejected, was betrayed by his own, was condemned to death. But 18 says, For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive he how he prevailed nothing. Behold, the world is as gone after him. And there were, there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Because Christ knew that a true servant of the Most High God, a true apostle, a true prophet, at anyone that claims or that are true PM, children of God will have something to dislike about their life because of the trials, because of the testing that they will have to endure, the persecution, the rejection, the scourging, whatever it is that Christ himself experienced here on earth is the same thing that that person will go through. So he said he will love his life. People who are comfortable living their life as nothing affecting them, unbothered, feasting and fetting and just having fun. That cannot demonstrate or reflect the life of Christ, a Christ-like life. Because the scripture says it. He who tries to save his life 
don't want to go through all the testing and the trials, want to avoid all of the, 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 the testing and the trials that will come their way. He said you will lose it anyway. Because we were called to walk the same life that Christ walked, to experience the same things that he experienced. That is the only how we can know for sure that we are one with Christ because we have partake and we have drank from his cup. So verse 26 says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. And that serving is not always easy to follow Christ, whatever he commands us to do, wherever he sends us. Christ did not come to portray a perfect life, a life full of blessing as many profess today or claiming. When you listen to the world, sorry, all you hear about the goodness of the Lord, what God can do for you, the, the, the prosperity. Nothing about be, re, being rejected, nothing about suffering, nothing about being um, selfless, serving someone else. Nothing about helping others, putting others before us. Because it's all about gain. It's all about boasting. It's all about looking good. It's all about feeling good. But Jesus did not come to feel good. He was a nomad. He didn't even have a place of rest. He said, if any man serve him, I'm just repeating a bit of verse um, 26. Also, my sub, if sorry, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. You want honor? Serve God. Obey his command. Do what he asks you to do or we should do what he asks us to do sincerely wholeheartedly because we see that the apostles they gave up their life for christ so that many others could be saved but 27 says now is my soul troubled and what shall i say Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. So Christ himself even wanted to be excused from this task that God, his Father, had given him. Because he knew that it would not be an easy one. But he also knew that it was a must for him to complete the mission that his Father had called him to. Many of us get tired or weary along the way. Many of us feel like giving up sometimes, but there's no going back. There's no turning back. You can have it only when it's nice. You know Christ and you love Christ. If we are gonna if we're gonna walk with Christ, we are gonna partake in all of the things, not just the blessing, not just the good things but also in Christ's suffering. And that's the only way we can declare righteousness or, or um, show that we are righteous or demonstrate righteousness because it's based on the evidence, what we do, not just what we say, Our testimonies. 
everything the apostles did was based on testimonies that's why we have the example to live by and to follow we saw the, their life how they lived how they obeyed christ not just in the easy things but also in the hard things in the difficult tasks that they were given sacrificing give, leaving their families for long periods of time giving up all their good jobs staying without giving even when they didn't have coming together and supporting one another not thinking that i have i need to keep this here for myself or gathering for myself but putting together for the for the body of christ for whatever assignment god had given to them whatever needs to be done in the body So verse 28 says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Jesus knew that God had to get the honor and the glory. And he was willing to give it his life. So that God could get the glory. When we serve God, when we honor God as children, or servants of the Most High, then God gets the glory, He gets the honor. His name is being glorified. Because we were called to serve, not man, but to serve God. Verse 29 says, The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. So he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to go through it. But he did it for our sakes. And so we are doing the same for God. But 30 says, Sorry, verse 31, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto thee. He was talking about Satan. Now is the time Satan is going to be cast out. Because Christ's death meant that all power was given unto him in heaven and here on earth. And that sacrifice was to draw all men, to bring men unto God so that souls can be saved. This, he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abided forever. And how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? The people were ignorant. They didn't even understand what Christ was talking about. They had not a clue. Just like this world today is guessing everything coming up with their own understanding, their own interpretation about the things of the most sacred things of the most high because they understand they don't have the wisdom of the most high. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while he have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. Sorry, you cannot see in the dark. You're going to stumble. You're going to, something is going to get in your way. You're going to end up in an accident or something. But those who are walking in the light, I'm talking about in God's true wisdom. 
even if they falter, even if we falter, we cannot fall, we cannot stumble because Christ is our guide. While he had lied, believe in the light that he may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Because he knew that he wouldn't always be with them. So he was saying to his disciples, take heed of the things that, that he's sharing with them now. Because they would need it. And sometimes even if we know that we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is our guide, sometimes it feels for a season that Christ has left us. And we feel like we're stumbling. But he's there. He is never, he has never left because he promised that he will be with us. Even when we can't see him. Some people want to see to believe. While they have light, believe in the light, that he may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Verse 37 says, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Everything went out of their head. They completely forgot all that they saw. They, some still did not even believe, even if they saw it. That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who had believed our report, and to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed? But it is written that not everyone would believe because scripture must be fulfilled. What people do not know that everything is written, it is written that some would not believe. Isaiah prophesied. And all God's prophecies must come to pass. He said, who had believed our report? Only those who have the eyes to see will believe. Only those who are Christ, who belongs to Christ, will believe. So the doubters will continue to doubt. The rejecters will continue to reject. The haters will continue to hate. But it is for our people. Those of Israel that God has called to believe for such a time as this will believe, will hear the report, will accept the report, will know that it is Christ's report when they hear it. Verse 39 says, Therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, He that had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, be converted and I should heal them. So there are those who are blinded right now. The scripture it says, says it is for a time that God himself will reveal his secret in his people whom it is reserved for. It's not reserved for everybody. It says many are called but few are chosen. We all are children of the Most High. But God chose one nation of people. Israel to demonstrate his righteousness. And through Israel, many 
will receive Christ because God chose Israel to reveal his secrets. And those Gentiles that are also chosen or that are called, they too will hear and believe and know whom God has sent. Those whose eyes are blind and do not want to receive or would not receive at this time. It also has been written. It has been prophesied. But he said he, he will heal them in his timing. Those who are not, they, they, they are asleep. Those of Israel who are asleep, their eyes, there's a time for their eyes to be opened. There, there's a time and a season for the Lord to reveal himself to them so that they too will know God. 41 says, these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Isn't it the same thing that's happening today? Many know and have seen God's miracle, but yet because of others, because of... um gain wanted to be seen by men wanted to be favored by men have rejected god's God, um, doctrine have rejected the word of god refused to come out from among them refused to be separated refused to honor god's word and to obey his command Refuse to receive this doctrine. Refuse to receive those who God has appointed at this time. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Do you see why? It's all about vain glory. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. So Jesus didn't come to take God's glory and his honor. He came to give God the glory and the honor. And so those of us who are called to represent Christ, to demonstrate Christ's righteousness is not to take God's honor and his glory, but our life will reflect Christ and others will know that everything we do is in the honor and glory of God, for his honor and glory. So that he can be lifted up. God gets the glory. Because he alone is worthy to be praised. Verse 44 says, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth, sorry, verse 45, And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light unto the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him. I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So Christ didn't come to condemn, but he came to save the world. That does not mean that the world will not be judged. by God. That's not an excuse 
to continue in wrongdoing and to continue to reject God's word. So verse 48 says, He that rejected me and received not my words had one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. So it's God that is going to do the judging in the last days. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say, and I say, and what I should speak. All Jesus came was to demonstrate God's righteousness, was to obey his Father and to carry out his Father's will. And the scripture is making it very clear here. So verse 50 says, And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said, said unto me, so I speak. So Christ did not speak his own words. He did not speak according to what he wanted to say, but he said what his father told him to say. And it's the same way Christ has a servant whom he will instruct in the last days and whatever he commands his servant to do or to say, that he should say and that he should do. Because just as Christ obeyed his Father, so those who are called and are his true servants will follow in Christ's footsteps. May his word be confirmed in your heart. All praises to the Most High indeed for his word. And until we meet again for another daily word, shalom to you all. Shalom.